ladies and gentlemen. So I probably should call the Tuesday, May the 12th, 2015, public hearings and regular city council meeting to order. This time I ask if you rise for our invitation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask Councilman Shirley, would you mind delivering our invitation this evening? Most gracious and perfect Heavenly Father, we ask for that you come down upon us tonight, help us to do things that are best for this city, and enable us all to grow together. Unity, love, guide us, direct us, draw us all flesh from your Son, Jesus Christ, in his name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, please be seated. Uh, at this time, the chair will entertain a motion to waive the reading and approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 14, 2015, regular city council meeting, Tuesday, April the 21st, and Tuesday, May the 5th. 2015 special city council meetings. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 By nay. Uh, motion carries. Uh, presentations. We have item A on our agenda. We have two proclamations um, this evening. So Brad and Andrea are here from Sound Solution. Brad, how do you say your last name again? Oh. I'm sorry? That's it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. It's going to be a good meeting tonight. So um, I'd ask if you'd come up. I'm going to sign this proclamation for you. Excellent. And that's how your dad reads it anytime I see it. That's the, that's its genetic. That's where I get it from. I can't help it. It's his fault. So um, the city would like to present you with this proclamation for better hearing and speech month. And uh, you guys, coincidentally, they just had a grand opening, I don't know, what was it, eight months ago? Has it been that long? Yeah, about a year ago. Yeah, so um, wonderful facility out on the bypass, um, parts billions, but we uh, couldn't wrangle them into the city just yet. We're still working on that, by the way. But we wanted to present you with a proclamation. Didn't know if you wanted to just say a word or two, since we've got a... Uh, sure. guest audience today I wanted to give you this and say congratulations Thank you. on your month. Thank you Thank both you. for being here. Well, we certainly very much appreciate this. Uh, just a quick note that Better Hearing Month is actually a national, I shouldn't say holiday, but basically more of a proclamation. Um, Better Hearing Month is being recognized all across the country and at Sound Solutions Hearing Care what we are doing to help recognize that is we are offering free hearing tests as a courtesy to all residents and believe it or not I was specifically asked to make sure that each and every member here at council go ahead and get their free <laughs> hearing test. <laughs> what? You got it. it uh, just to let you know I mean it is one of those things that should be checked on an annual basis most physicians aren't doing it so you just take it upon yourself yeah. and we certainly would uh, love for you to come out and see our facilities. Thank you. Now does your hearing test is that the one with the beeps? Where you put the headphones on to sit in the soundproof booth, but yours differently. That is one portion of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that so is. So we do that for the fire department, and uh, I mean, I, I you realize how loud music growing up like totally kills your hearing, and you get to the point where you're just pushing the button because you know that the beat probably <laughs> should be there, but you just can't really hear it. So we appreciate what you do, and uh, you got a wonderful place out there. So hope you guys take a, an opportunity to go by and, and see them. Uh, go get your hearing check yeah. as well. We're there at the railroad tracks on 151. Everybody knows where Westwood Barbecue is. We're mm -hmm. right next door. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you all. 40 hours. Oh, please. Now he sits up once another photo. Okay, I'll try this. Mm -hmm. Russell always picks the day that I don't wear my blazer. Thanks, Russell. <laughs> that worked? Got it. All right, thank, thank you all you. for coming. this one very quickly. So we have with us uh, Chris Rollinson and Carol Singletary. 
Um, if y'all would come up, did I say that wrong? No, it's because well, Carol's not here. Oh, Carol's not here. You're not Carol then. I assumed you were Carol. Yeah. Would you mind coming forward? So Chris is here for Teen Pregnancy Prevention Line. And his boss, as it turns out, is a dear friend of mine uh, that is in the uh, Liberty Fellowship with me. And so I am super upset that he didn't come personally. You're stuck with me, sorry. I'm stuck. <coughs> You're a good second place. So we're going to take a picture and we're going to send it to Forrest and put it on his Instagram page and tell him what he missed. <laughs> so you tell him you got a national holiday named after you, keys to the city, what else would you like? <laughs> that, that'll work right there. You just named it. So Teen Pregnancy Month is something, um, coincidentally, that is uh, a, and a very important platform to of all people, Harris DeLoach. Harris DeLoach has been working very diligently and very quietly, probably. A lot of people you may not have known this um, on these issues. Darlington County is not in the best of places, and uh, he would like to see that changed. And you guys, and Forrest included, uh, Forrest is just this ball of energy, and he has been working tirelessly to, uh, to lead your group. Uh, you've done some pretty amazing things, and y'all just got a recognition last week, was it, or a week before? You got some big national recognition I saw on these posts. But. Oh, yes, don't ask me to tell you what it was. Yeah, it was for a workforce experience or something. Yeah, yeah, something and you guys have a lot of fun. We try to. Yeah. We try to. So we want to um, honor you with Teen Pregnancy <coughs> Prevention Month, and we didn't know if you wanted to just say a couple of words about what you're doing. Uh, well, I can talk about what we're doing, but more importantly, what Darlington's doing is making sure they strides. I know um, nationwide, teen pregnancy rates are the lowest they've ever been. Nationwide, since we've been tracking them. I know there's a lot more tension because the Teen Mom TV show. Yeah social media and they're like oh it's such a big problem that reality is it's actually lower than it's ever been tracked now we haven't tracked it this is since about the 80s uh in south carolina in the last 20 years it's down 54 wow. percent um in the last two years that we've tracked them it's about a two-year lag it's down actually 13 percent in the state darlington in that same time period is down 19 percent mm -hmm. so you're ahead of the game there and the 20-year periods are down about 49%, so not quite with the state average, but um, there's a lot of great momentum going here with First Steps. They're doing some great things. They've actually got two federal grants. The, they're receiving money from two federal grants to work with teen, uh, teen mothers. And in that same time, I'll tell you what, I started in 07, it used to be one third of all teen pregnancies were repeat pregnancies. And today it's actually South Carolina, it's only 24%. So there's progress there as well. So there's a lot of good stuff going on here. Our school with Harrison Deloach, uh, yeah. we got a planning grant, but they're working on first steps. And that's hopefully parlays his way into a good grant by uh, Duke Powers, interested in investing a lot of money in, in Darlington County. So there's a lot of great room there. Well, you're welcome back anytime. Appreciate and it. please take this back to your team and thank you and congratulations. You got it. Oh, Forrest, we said hello. We're, We're doing another. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's Here's a little this right. That work? Uh, I took a picture of it, so I'm gonna tag him in his Instagram. Thanks for you. Good to see you. Okay, um, item B on our agenda: parking and beautification improvements update. The lady that keeps us well trodden is here. This is Carol Ann Godwin, who we affectionately refer to as mom a lot of times. This is right. Come on up. Right. And she, as you know, is the committee chair. Would you mind coming to the microphone, please, madam? Sure. Just so we can record it. Oh, great. <laughs> Mayor Kennington and Council, um, as you stated, I am Caroline Tide, and I'm the chair of the Parking Education and Business Improvement Commission. Um, our commission consists of five members, and in accordance with our bylaws, um, to be um, a member, you um, have to be either a business owner or a property owner in our community area. The other four members of the commission are Richard Porter, Emily Phillips, Steve Fagan, and our latest member, Bob Brown. Um, we collect a special fee once a year 
from the downtown businesses, offices, and apartments for the purpose of parking beautification and improvement for our downtown <coughs> district. Since I was here last year, we have funded the painting of the Arbor in Centennial Park. We've had repair work done in the North College Avenue parking lot, and this was just a fix um, to get us through into the construction back there, but it was in such poor shape, we felt like we had to do something. Um, we also share in the expense of the electrical work in the alley at the rear of Mantissa Hotel. Um, we contributed to the purchase of new Christmas banners for the poles, and just recently we um, helped fund the design and construction project for the North College Avenue parking lot. And the commission would like to thank council for working <coughs> with us to make this project um, come to fruition. We contribute $3,000 annually to the maintenance of Centennial Park and actually $11,400 for the maintenance, general care, and cleanliness of the parking lots. And that figure includes the new contract that um, we have with the city for the North College um, Avenue parking lot. Um, one of our ongoing problems that keeps occurring is um, trying to keep employees and employers out of customer parking places. And with new businesses and everything, this is becoming, you know, more of a problem. So um, we fought it for years. So if y'all can come up with any, help us with a solution. But um, I would like to personally thank Shannon Morrison and because she's been a great assistance to me personally and to the commission this year. Um, we look forward to working with the city, um, realizing that parking and appearance of our downtown are key elements that are vital to our future. Um, that's it, unless you have any questions for me. So we want to thank you because a lot of what we do is not possible without the funding that you give us. And uh, we hope that um, you are as excited as we are about all the upgrades coming, especially to the parking aspect of parking and beautification, but also the beautification aspect, which is always ongoing. Um, and thank you personally for your patience because you're co-located next to some of the most major construction downtown. And hopefully, it won't be very much longer, you're gonna have um, a really nice calling card right beside you. So. Um, thank you for that. And your leadership as well. Any uh, questions on behalf of council? Okay. Madam, thank you for your service. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Item C on the agenda. Mr. Chastain, Director of Innovation. Thank you, Mayor Pennington, Council. Thanks for having me here. I set front of this group um, February to discuss the startup parcel program that was launching. So I come here today to talk about its evolution, uh, its process soon to be coming to a close with the announcement of the winners and then our lengthy process of filling these winners into our downtown storefronts. In addition to that, I'd like to talk about the upcoming code camps for our youth in middle school and high school this summer and then um, some possible recruiting efforts that are in the works at the center and ongoing innovators at the center, so I'll try to be brief. When, I be, when we began the process, we had nine entrepreneurs who applied for the program. They were then cut to eight who made it fast, uh, first, first review. Since then, we've had an elected volunteer judge that has, uh, judges, excuse me, that have narrowed that group down to four. Um, those four will uh, finalize business plans tomorrow to be submitted to the next round of judges. Uh, that judging closed door judging event will take place next Monday night here in Council Chambers. At that time, or after that time, we will have the, win the two winners of, of the four finalists and announce that on Wednesday of next week at Black Creek Arts. I hope you all received an invitation. Um, it is open to the public. We'd like you all to attend and um, participate in that event. At that event, each person from the community will receive a ballot and get to vote on their People's Choice. It'll be a $1,000 cash prize for the People's Choice Award. 
The four finalists are Retrofit Sip and Seat, Seersucker Gypsy, The Barbershop Experience, and Mezzo Forte Restaurant. Um, seven of the eight that made it past the original cuts um, plan to open regardless of winning or not in the next eight months to 12. Five currently have signed or verbal locations in mind in our downtown district, and three of those seven will be minority owned and operated companies, which we're really excited about. Any questions on Startup Park School specific to anything that's taken in the past or that will be taking place next week? What time next week? Six o'clock on Wednesday, Black Creek Arts. What kind of business do minority uh, so the three, uh, two of them are restaurant ideas, and then one of them is an upscale men's barbershop lounge in the downtown community. Um, a very unique goal of theirs is to bridge the uh, racial divide between the white and black perceived barbershops in our community and have a very nice upscale place for everyone. I'm really looking forward to the presentation on Wednesday night. Uh, the other two restaurants, one has been cut, the other is in the final round. Anything further? Uh, code Camp, just real quickly. This yep. summer we launch a two-week robotics and Code Camp for middle school ages uh, 11 to 13 beginning June 22nd in the mornings. The afternoon kicks off with a Python Code Camp, two weeks long for high school students aged 14, 15 to 18. Uh, these will be free and we're, we will be targeting students at risk. In addition to that, um, some things that will be taking place for further education and continued outreach in education uh, for adults, young professionals, and uh, current business owners downtown will be a boot camp, uh, <coughs> a boot camp class system that will have week to week that will encompass uh, topics such as marketing, social media, website development, um, continuing education, these programming. We've been talking with both Main Street and the Chamber to organize and poll what is really needed in our current businesses downtown to increase their knowledge to help them run the business. Current innovators in the center. Uh, we're still working with seven. These seven entrepreneurs range from electronic vehicles for recreation use, uh, fitness products, app softwares, and forestry, uh, buying and selling, golf, uh, local food delivery systems for our heart school community, and web-based platform for new product launches. So exciting stuff, still working in the center, hoping that two graduate by the end of the year. Local food delivery in there? Yes, and it goes, and it goes back. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I would have thought that would have been me personally. <laughs> I love Is there any further questions about anything that you're currently working on? If you do have any follow-up questions, give me a call, send me an email, or please Can we buy stock in the local delivery option now? No. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Madam Manager, do you have an update that you're prepared for? Um, some people are happy. It's, um, you know, when there's progress, that means some people are displaced for a little while. Starting next Monday, Mentissa Alley will actually close between 4th Street and the new hotel for construction. Um, about 8 to 12 weeks, that will be closed. We have informed all the businesses and residents in that area. We have um, the college is very kind and they're letting people park in their parking lot. And then James is working on a plan for dumpsters and roll park in the meantime. So if you hear anything, we have informed residents and the owners that we have to close the entire alley to put in a new storm drain and to um, redo that alley. Once the alley is complete, it will also start working on this back parking lot. So they're starting in the parking lot right behind us, then they'll work on College Avenue and the parking lot across the street from there. So activity will start next time. So the west end of the alley is still going to be open? No. Well, for now, yes. For now, okay. Yes. The, um, if it's not down already, but they told me it would be on by tomorrow, so it won't be blocked anymore behind the hotel. Mm -hmm. So people will actually be able to walk through in the meantime until the pit hole is the window of the alley. Oh, I got you. Walk through the alley. Okay. That starts. Um, the other thing is, um, we heard a presentation from Sam Levine several months ago regarding the hospice house and the um, assisted living facility. They are still on go with both of those. The so urgent care is not because of the issues that we've read about in the newspaper. But they plan to have their building permits by July for the assisted living and then hopefully by the end of the year for the hospice house. The things are still moving along on that project. That's all. Okay. Any questions for the manager? Are they in a particular? 
date that it will be open? I don't know that. I'm not sure. Pray for no rain. Right. <laughs> we would know when Mr. Levine will be back for us. Um, he has no reason right now to come back unless you wanted to come give an update. I just want to um, ask about Medicaid. Okay. If you want, you can give me that question. I can send it to him. So. Well, I would like to know if they would be accepting Medicaid for the assisted living. Okay. And hospice as well. All right, if there's nothing else further for the manager, we'll move on to the consent agenda. And if there are no objections, we'll be received as information only. Bye, thank you. Uh, moving into unfinished business, first on our agenda for unfinished business is item six, the public hearing and final reading of ordinance 4194, if the manager will publish the ordinance. Sure, it's an ordinance. Providing the issuance and sale of water work and sewer system revenue bonds in the city of Hartsville, South Carolina, and other matters relating thereto. Okay, you've heard the reading of the time of the presentation by the city manager. At this time, the chair will open the public hearing. If you would like to be heard on Ordinance 4194, if you will come to the front, state your name and address for the record. Please limit your comments to two minutes or less. Hearing none, the chair will close the public hearing and entertain any motions on the floor. Mr. Mayor, make a motion we pass ordinance 4194. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on ordinance 4194? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by nay. The ordinance passed. Item 7 on the agenda, public hearing and final reading of ordinance 4195, the manager will publish the ordinance. Ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of waterworks and sewer system improvement and refunding revenue bonds to be designated series 2015 in the principal amount of not exceeding $12 million of the city of Hartsville, South Carolina and other matters relating thereto. Okay, you've heard the reading and title of the presentation by the city manager. At this time, the chair will open the public hearing. If you'd like to be heard on Ordinance 4195, if you will come to the front, state your name and address for the record. Please limit your comments to two minutes or less. Hearing now, the chair will close the public hearing and entertain public hearing and entertain any motions on the floor. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to pass 4195. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on Ordinance 4195? Hearing none, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed by nay. The ayes have. Item 8 on the agenda, public hearing and final reading of Ordinance 4197, if the manager will publish the ordinance. It's an ordinance to amend Hartsville City Code Appendix A zoning. Article 9, District Regulations, Section 6, B2 and B3, Business Zone, by the addition of Section 32, Self-Service Storage Facilities, Subsection 1, A through G. Okay, you've heard the reading of the title and presentation of Ordinance 4197. This time the chair will open the public hearing. If you'd like to be heard on Ordinance 4197, if you'll please come to the front, state your name and address for the record. Please limit your comments to two minutes or less. Hearing none, the chair will move to close the public hearing of Ordinance 4197 and entertain any motions from the floor. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we pass Ordinance 4197. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on Ordinance 4197? Yes. Your discussion, please. Mr. Mayor, I would like to see language put in um, Ordinance 4197, Article Number 24. It lists the footage. Um, and also, ordinance number 31, the list specific footage, and we did not get that on this ordinance. Okay, um, the man will need to put that in the form of a motion. So if you make the motion for what you just said. This one will make a motion that we... Yes, ma'am. Make an amendment to include the um, footage. Tell me the, um, the reference numbers again. Reference number 24 and also reference number 31. The 
because as we have it, there is no, um, that was an option. For you, for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Somebody needs to put a number there. All right, because so, that was one of the options. So right now as it stands, it's 500 feet. Or is your proposal to change that? Oh, now see here, it, it, there's no here. Remember, we said we didn't know what that number should be. So in item 32? 32. Okay. Um, that was, that was an amended, um, that's an amended item to 32, right? 32.1H, is that correct? Be. Oh, oh striking the notice. Okay. Right, right. No, I got that. I just couldn't remember where it was inserted. Okay. Tell me the second part of the motion. To include that. <coughs> okay. So, uh, Madam Councilwoman has made a motion. I'm going to restate the benefit of the clerk for an amendment to. Ordinance 4197, amending section 32.1, subsection B, um, strike and remove, shall not be adjacent to a residential property, and insert, shall not be within, how many feet? No, I'm not saying strike and remove. Not in order to be stated. In addition to. I'm not going to proceed to decide what the footage should be, but I, I feel that a number should be there for future references. Okay, you, you gotta, if you're going to make the motion, then you got to have some number. I don't know of any other way to determine. It's, it's, it was not staff's recommendation to have a number we thought it was arbitrary. Right, so, so you know, it has to be a number. Go with that for now. That's the best the intent. Okay. Okay, okay. so. Um, 500 feet, so it's a strike and remove, shall not be adjacent to residential property, to shall not be within 500 feet from residential property. Yes. All right, that is the motion to amend ordinance 4197. Is there a second? No. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the ordinance as, or the amendment to the ordinance? Okay. Yes, my, my question would be, and I asked this, I think last week, uh, when Ms. Kelly was here, either a radius or linear, you can go up and down the street 500 feet or 50 feet, or you can go a radius of two different things. I would suggest that it be 500 feet, then we can go up and down the street. So let the clerk reflect in the record that the intent is linear feet for measurement. I don't know if that changes in the definition. Or you just insert the word linear in front of feet, I think. Perfect. All right, is there any further discussion on the amendment to Ordinance 4197? Discussion. All in favor of the amendment ordinance 4197 signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by nay. Nay. Call for division on that. What is that? Please, um, maybe three, three. Show of hands one more time for aye. Three and nay. Three. So, um, yeah. I love my parliamentarians. <laughs> All right, so the, the amendment, the amendment of the ordinance is defeated. So Matt, for the clarity of the record, let the record reflect that I voted um, against yes. that. Um, so, yes ma'am. One, one other question. Yes ma'am. Council Member Graham was asking if there is no proper on Pool Street, but it's just not limited to Pool Street that way. That is correct. This is no this, no houses on Pool Street. 
Well, but it's just not limited to Pool Street. It's That's a technical question because there are there are residences on Pool Street, even though the address, the front of the house, points to whatever the other what's the other street, Sumter. But there. <clears throat> it comes to adjacency that is still considered adjacent to her, and that's a resident home. Does that clarify your question? Okay. So, um, if there are no other amendments to 4197 and there is no further discussion, uh, all in favor of 4197 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by nay. Nay. So, let the record reflect that there is a dissenting vote. But the ordinance 4197 has passed. Item number nine on the agenda is new business. First reading of ordinance 4198. If the manager will publish the ordinance. An ordinance to adopt the budget for the city of Hartsville, South Carolina, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015, and ending June 30, 2016. Okay, you've heard the reading and title of the presentation by the manager of ordinance 4198. This time, the chair will entertain any motions for approval of the first reading. Mr. Mayor, I'd like a motion to pass ordinance 4198. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Madam. Mr. Mayor, I want to make a, ask a question um, in section two. Number eight. This is water. Do we find her? Section 2 and A of the ordinance itself? Well, actually, yes. Okay. Go to, actually, it's A of Section B of Section 1J above. That is for the splash pad, funding for the splash pad. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And that's seven mills left for all taxable real and personal property. Wait, wait, you skipped around. So, what are, what are you asking? I'm asking. This one? Yes. Okay. She's on section 2B. <coughs> the tax necessary to pay the debt service on the city's GEO bond. The seven mills was um, to pay the GEO bond that was issued in 2012. And that bond went for the construction of and renovation of this building, a small portion for the splash pad, and a portion for renovations at Pride Park in 2012. Okay, any further questions? Thank you, Madam Finance Director. Um, hearing on all in favor of Ordinance 4198, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by nay. First reading of Ordinance 4198 has passed. Item 10 on the agenda, first reading of Ordinance 4199, the manager will publish the ordinance. Ordinance amending the 2014 2015 fiscal year general fund budget. <coughs> Okay, um, you further reading of ordinance 4199, Chair will entertain any motions to approve first reading. Make a motion to pass ordinance 4199. Okay, there's a motion, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on ordinance 4199? Okay, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by nay. The ordinance passes. Does your, does your copy say one fire truck? Because ours has two on here. Is that a typo? You get two for that amount. <laughs> if there's anybody that can do it, that crowd back there can get it done. Just making sure that he's still awake back there. Listen. Excuse me. Excuse me. I did not, I, I did not mean to, to, to direct that. That response to the finance director, I should have gone through the finance chairman first. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, it's okay? All right, sure. proceed. <laughs> okay, um, item 11 on the agenda, first reading of ordinance 4200. This is an ordinance to amend Hartsville City Code Appendix A, zoning, chapter 7, signs and advertising devices, and section 7, signs permitted in Central Business District B1, subsection I. Okay, um, you've heard the reading of ordinance 4200. 
Uh, the chair will entertain any motions. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to pass 4200. There's a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This is to give two signs instead of one 15 foot sign, lay sign per story. On buildings of two or more stories with equal and opposing entrances. So, um, I'm not quite sure the technical definition, but. Um, In the streets, Carolina Avenue, 4th Street. Well, I mean, if you're asking for like specific references where this would apply, the uh, the new hotel, the Mantissa, has um, equal and opposing um, entrances. And the idea is that we're trying to develop a city that is um, livable, walkable, and accessible. And so we want to encourage people to use parking in the back of buildings. And so the thinking is that the back entrance is equally as important to the front entrance. So there was some discussion from planning whether one, one, the back sign should be smaller. And I'm glad to see that the recommendation is that they should be equal because in our eyes they're just as important. So that's what the change is. Okay, and if, if the summary says it's for A or B, Right. I just want to make sure I understand correctly. Right. That's right. Okay. Um, and the recommendation is 15 square feet per story. So, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by nay. First reading of the ordinance passes. Item 12 on the agenda, resolution 5-15-01. A resolution for approval to engage Uptown Services LLC to perform an FFTP feasibility study. Is there such a motion? Well, Jim and I were having a debate on if it's FTTP or FFTP. It's listed both ways. FTTP, I to the premises. To the premises. Okay. Didn't we? Do this month when you were first in office mail. I had spent so long ago I can't even remember that far back. Let me refresh your memory. We've been down this trail once. Yeah, we have. What's changed that, that would allow us to do it now? Um, well, I mean, we hadn't increased the population. That was a drawback the last time. So let me um, let me speak to that then. So what's changed, the councilman asked, is why are we in any different situation than we were six years ago? Um, six years ago, we were in a great position to provide, where the city would provide fiber. And the short of it is, the, the thinking that we have in this wonderful, small, progressive little city is that, um, when it, like your interest is economic development, generating jobs, and keeping revenue within the city. So that's what the intent of fiber to the premises, or what we call loosely fiber to the home was, is that the city could run fiber to the home much like a utility that we've given away, and we would be essentially creating new jobs in Hartsville, and instead of sending the money that we now pay for that fiber, so cable, telephone, uh, television, uh, internet, uh, instead of sending that to Charlotte or wherever these, these mega corporations are headquartered, we'd actually keep that money within the city limits. So it would be an, an economic development engine, if you will, for us. Um, what we're asking here is to look at a feasibility study because when we first applied for fiber to the home, a few things were happening. One, the conglomerates were fighting to change the laws in the states. And if you recall, we spent two years with our senator working to carve out an exemption for Hartsville, South Carolina, which I think was very, um, very important. What it meant was that Hartsville, South Carolina is the only municipality in the state that would have the ability to run this like a utility, to provide fiber to their residences. To paint you the broader picture, um, for all of you that are sitting here going, what in the world is he talking about? Can you imagine going home because you can't get out of your house and watching the Red Foxes play on Channel 2? Or that your children who are at home who don't have access to internet would have more affordable access to higher speed internet than was previously available to them. 
So it impacts education, um, it impacts quality of life, it impacts economic development. One of the main things that anyone in economic development in the last decade will tell you is Hartsville could surely stand to have a call center. We've got a qualified workforce that would love to, to have that. And in our opinion, um, those of us that are in support of, of this type proposal, we believe that we could provide better services, create more revenue, keep those jobs here, and uh, potentially reduce the need to increase taxes by providing these services. And they're higher quality services than we currently receive now. So to give you, to give you the broad stroke, um, some of the schools now struggle for kids to get time on the internet and they struggle with the bandwidth that they're allowed to use. And so we're talking about going from high speed, which right now they call a Volkswagen, a Ferrari. It's not the case. A Ferrari exists, and you guys probably have read about it, and I'm not here to preach about this, but for those of you that know that Google Fiber is coming to North Carolina, they're bringing um, 100 meg service, which is blazing fast, for the same price that I'm paying right now for the Volkswagen. So the idea is that now the FCC has changed their position, the Federal Communications Commission, Commission has changed their position and they believe that municipalities should be able to provide these services. So what we worked on for two years, we weren't able to take advantage of and we were greatly appreciative to, uh, to Senator Moy for his help on that. Um, however, the federal government now thinks that this is a great idea and so what we'd like to do is, we'd like to see what it would cost to provide these services just to the city, because when we initially proposed this grant, it was to serve the un underserved areas, which is half of, half of Hartsville, all the way up to Lamar. Now, in the, in the agreement we made in the, in the Senate negotiations was that we would relinquish our rights to, to serve, um, we would, we would trade off the other half of the city to just focus on Hartsville because our obligation is to, um, to serve the city. So we don't know what those numbers would be and the $15 million projection that, that we had back then, which was to serve a pretty broad area, now could be a lot less because Hartsville is more dense than serving up out in the country to Lamar. So we'd like to find out how close we really are to being able to provide this type of infrastructure. And this piggybacks off of um, the discussion that we're having is how can we bring added value to our businesses that exist in the downtown area by providing um, Wi-Fi to our retail-based downtown. So that is the bulk of it. And I didn't mean to take that long to explain it. Any other not in the city and outside the city. No, ma'am. This, this study yes. would just include the city limits. Yes, ma'am. Can you have to pay another fee? Another fee? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, absolutely, we do. And that fee is? 28. 28? Okay, so it's come down from 30. I thought it was 30. 2,000 feet. Hmm? And I think we can, yeah. But the most 31. I, I think he did 3,000 travel last time and we didn't use that. Or did we? <coughs> okay. All right, so um, there are no motions on the floor if my memory serves correctly. No, I think there was a motion. Oh, is there? Oh, I wonder. I'm sorry. No discussion. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Um, is there any further discussion about the feasibility study? Or is there any concern? And I want you guys to be honest. You know, we're asking you to spend a considerable amount of money. Is there a concern? Of course there is. Got, I mean, if we know for sure it's a sure thing, I'm all in. But if it's not, well, we sure thing. Fifty thousand the first time, did Yeah. And now another twenty-eight. That's a lot of money to be telling no to you. Well, I make the argument that if we passed it the first time, we would have been funded because we made it through three rounds of due diligence and the funding ran out because council didn't act on it when when it was first proposed and that's the privilege of council um, you know we could have been sitting in a, in a different place than we are right now is there a risk absolutely at some point we've got to figure out where to get whatever it costs to do that from 
you know, I'd make the argument to uh, some of the foundations that exist that the ability to provide this is in the wheelhouse of take the Byerly Foundation, for example, because it touches on every major tenet of what their mission statement is. I mean, it runs the game. Education, economic development, quality of life, you name it. It impacts it in ways that, that I can't even put together. And so when I, was, when I was illustrating, how would you like to sit at home and watch the Red Foxes on live television? That's not even taking into consideration the opportunity for someone like Ace Hardware to run a commercial on a local captive audience, which generates revenue, additional revenue for the city. So this thing becomes an engine a lot like water and sewer, which is a, our only proprietary fund which actually generates revenue in excess of the splash pad. Is that accurate, Madam Chair? I mean, Madam Finance Director? So we're looking for ways to invest that return revenue. One of the things that I'm looking at, and if you go over into the uh, proposal, you're highlighting some cities, and, and some of these cities are larger than Hartsville, and some of them are not, not much larger. There's a city or town in Tennessee with 9,000 homes. Uh, and um, they give you some projections about, you know, what percentage of those homes are utilizing the city service there, and, um, you know, their profitability there. And, Item B there, once you get in it, they're generating revenues of uh, three and a half billion dollars annually. So it's not a done deal, it's, it's a, a deal that you study. But um, it is a, a, an opportunity and, and broadband is where it's going. Uh, even there's a lot of shakeout now, you know, uh, in the broadband industry. So if the city could find another revenue stream, I think that would be good for us. There's nothing that we do in the city to generate revenue again, other than water and sewer and the splash pad. And we said six years ago that what we were gonna do was we were gonna focus on investments that return on their investment, whether it was cash or quality of life. And this one hits both, potentially hits both. Is there any proposal that would just be for the city limits with the population of seven or seven, eight, something like that. Um, futuristically, if there was a, out, could there be an out of city limit? Um, I, I don't know how to answer that. Well, the exemption doesn't matter anymore because of the FCC ruling. So, you know, it gets into the whole discussion of can we provide services where they're not being provided beyond their limits. I can see your wheels both churning. I don't even want to <laughs> ask you to comment on it. Let me just say I don't know. Potentially, sure, that's a that's a bridge to cross. But for this conversation, let's just assume that it is for the improvement of city services alone because I don't know how to answer the second part. My hopes would be absolutely. But um, the mayor pro tem in me says, you know, this is something that is supported by the taxpayers that live in this area and they should be the ones to benefit from it. Because potentially as you generate $3 million in revenue, um, optimistically, that's $3 million in tax increase that you don't have to go through. And we no longer are in the position of cutting services to try and balance a budget every year. And one, one thing also, uh, the state of South Carolina, when they're looking at local governments, they're pretty restricted on what we can do. There aren't a whole lot of options for, for finding new revenue. And we're all tax adverse, so that's not an option. And, and this is something that would be a service and it wouldn't be mandatory if we sign on if you think you're getting a good deal and you think you're getting a good price. For once in a lifetime, we would be getting back a utility that we gave up. And I know we didn't technically give this up, but if you look at Camden, which is an electric city, they still own their utilities. And even though they don't traditionally operate like a utility, they still generate revenue based off of their, their poles. They created jobs because their people go fix them. And this is very much in that same vein. And I think, and I have not visited Wilson, North Carolina, perhaps you have, but I think the nearby 
a great example is Wilson, North Carolina. And, and they carved out a pretty good exemption for themselves and have done real well. They're one of the first ones that have, have been successful in doing this. Salisbury in, in as well. And as Google Fiber comes to the research triangle and potentially Charlotte, the real question that we ought to be asking as a country even is um, how do we impact rural cities? Half of you guys are going to roll your eyes when I say this, but half of South Carolina cities are under a thousand in population. It's easy to solve problems in Columbia and Greenville and, and Spartanburg and Charleston because they are so massive and so dense. You can spread that tax base out a lot of ways, but when you're supported by you know, 7,500 taxpayers that are paying for 35,000 people to come in daily, you know, that's a, that's a tough position to be in. And, and the real question of figuring out what keeps people, places like Bishopville, South Carolina, from going under is how do we solve that problem in small town America? And this, I think, is one of the ways that we could do that. Now, light rail happens to be the other, so I don't think I'm going to win that argument <laughs> today. I, mean, I, I think that would be um, a very compelling argument. Um, what a source of revenue for the city um, because in South Hartsville area we, we're upside down in taxes. Yeah, and that's that doesn't even that doesn't even speak to um, you know how do we increase opportunity. And Can I clarify one point? I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. You know, when we speak of the three and a half million dollars, that's not three and a half million dollars that can come over to the general funds, I just want to make sure there is a little bit of clarification. Just like water and sewer fund generates about five million dollars in revenue, there are definitely limitations as to what can come over to the general funds. I just want to make sure that was well it's revenue and then you've got to take that revenue and run the service. Right, because right. you do. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have operating costs and you're gonna have capital expenditures that you're gonna have to account for. And so you would potentially but there will be a franchise, a franchise fee. fee. Yeah a franchise so you fee will is be pulling money back in. But not to the tune of, you know, if we made you know, three and a half million dollars in revenue, you wouldn't be looking at three and a half million dollars coming over right. to the general fund. It would be a fraction. An example would be out of water and sewer, five million dollar revenue, you're probably looking at seven hundred thousand dollars out of the whole five million that actually gets to. But it'd be seven hundred thousand more than we generate now, and that's I'm the point. Clarify. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm looking at the upside down in this part. Sure. Of South Hartsville and tax. Yep. Mr. Mayor, you asked for well, certain honesty. Please. My biggest fear, the light that you portrayed, all positive. Yeah. I'm in on those bullet points. Right. My biggest fear is how do we compete against our existing cable company? And then if we do and we get our infrastructure in and they lower their rates and we're left with that millions of dollars, what do we do then? So I mean, you bring up a very valid point. Um, there are cities that have failed. I, every time I mention fiber to the home, somebody sends me an email with a couple of cities that tried it and it didn't work. So I would be lying to you to say that it's just a magical pill that we swallow. I think that the person that wins in the end is the consumer because then it becomes a competition of businesses. Who provides better services? Who buys into the fact that we're spending our money and it is staying in Hartsville specifically? and the people that we hire live in Hartsville specifically. So when people buy into that, even if a price war ensues, and that happens in Wilson, North Carolina, it happened. Um, as it turns out, <coughs> the major competitor at Wilson, North Carolina is selling bulk fiber to Wilson, North Carolina. They're winning even though they're losing, right? Um, I think that's good for the, for the consumer because now they're paying even less than the market would bear. Um, how, you know, you're asking how do you still float that that loan or bond, and we haven't even crossed that stream. If we got back a feasibility study and it said because of the density and because of, of the increase in technology, it would only cost us $5 million, I'd tell you that'd be the easiest risk to make, and I'd go find the, the first person I knew with $5 million and say, this is the best loan you can make. Um, if it turns out to be 15 million and nobody's going to touch it. You know, the money will have been spent, but it's, it's, it's a risk 
with opportunity costs involved. So I mean, you're never gonna find out if you don't spend the money. And if it works out in the best case scenario, you're gonna make a lot more money back. In each of these cases, you know, they've got competitors. You know, traditional cable is there and the city's supplied service is not gonna get 100% of the business. And some of them are making uh, revenue and, and a profit with 25 or 30 percent penetration so you don't have to get all of that and the thing, if you paid attention to a lot of the merger uh, news lately and, and, and Comcast and, and Time Warner there's a lot about customer service there yeah. and, and, and some of those companies don't have the best record with customer service Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What percentage of the population do you think would want to get? So the the last study, the adoption rate was pretty conservative. I believe it was twenty percent over five years, and that's may not even be accurate, but it was it was a very conservative adoption rate. It almost assumes worst case scenario. Um, less than a quarter of the population decides they want the service. So I, I can't I can't answer that question. This study will tell us what they think via statistical surveys. So they pick a survey area and they go in and say, you know, would you be willing to buy these services if, if this person provided? Who are you using now? Do you have, well, how fast is your internet now? <coughs> Would you like faster internet? All these things. Even the ability to provide the service. Let's say we didn't get the however many millions it takes, right? Even the ability is only going to help us because if there, if there is leverage that the competition is gonna say, hmm, I better go ahead and invest in Hartsville because these guys have the opportunity. So the original argument that I made to the, to the Senate panel was we asked them to come in and give us the best service possible, right? The fastest internet. So Google is going into Raleigh and they're giving them the highest speeds possible. They told us, we can't do this for you because we'll never recoup that investment. You're a small town, right? only a percentage of your population is really going to use it. It's not a good investment for us. And we're not for the government doing services, you know, in the private sector. Only in the case where the private sector says, we're not going to come to your town. We're not going to improve the services. So if anything, it gives us the leverage to, to go to them and say, we can do this. We can provide a hundred meg service if, if we want. How about you guys do it instead? <coughs> If you don't get 50% of the population, you'd be able to sell it to other cities. I can't even begin to answer that. I'm not, I'm not sure how that works. I mean, in the best case scenario, yeah, that'd be awesome to sell it to other cities. But for now, I think we should just consider this to be inside. So let's move this along. Um, I understand if there is some hesitancy to adopt this. Um, it's progressive. And... I think it paints the city in a really unique light. When I look at the, the cities that are small towns that are up in the, the left-hand corner of the United States, they're always in the news because they are progressive and they're doing really amazing things. And, you know, I spoke with the manager last night and she said, you know, we just came back from the meeting with the Municipal Association and everybody is beating her door down to find out how is it that Hartsville is doing all these amazing things and they're only a town of 8,000? Is that an accurate reflection on what people were saying? So this is just one more thing that, that says, you know, we're thinking about something that no other city in South Carolina has really considered. A county, two counties have, but no other municipality is this forward thinking. And, uh, you know, with, with uh, risk comes reward, so. Anyway, let's move the discussion. If there are no other questions, let's just, let's move to the vote. No other questions? Okay. Um, everyone that is in favor of ordinance resolution, thank you, resolution 5-1501, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all right. That's 
Right, okay. No? Nay? One, one descending. Okay. Thank you for your, your honesty on that. Um, so the resolution passes. Uh, item 13 on the agenda is resolution 5 15 02 is a resolution authorizing the imposition of financial policies for the waterworks and sewer system of the city of Hartsville, South Carolina and other matters relating thereto. Chair will entertain any motions to adopt. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to pass on, oh, excuse me, uh, resolution 05-15-02. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Nobody. Me what you, what you uh, say when you authorize the imposition of financial policy. Um, Madam? Essentially, these are putting um, policies that most of which we already have in place. He's putting them in a more formalized manner where you guys are officially approving them and adopting them. In the past, they were um, not necessarily even written in, in some cases, but it sets forth policy regarding revenue and expenses um, that will have a balanced budget. Um, it deals with the transfers and what is allowable between water and sewer fund and the general fund. So, again, it's a lot of um, practices that we had in place but didn't have them in a formalized policy and you guys had never formally <coughs> approved or adopted a policy. So it really just kind of tightens all that up and puts it in one place um, and makes it part of legislation. So you would be the ones who would have the authority to actually make any changes to these policies. And in this year's budget, there <coughs> are some transfers between uh, utility and general funds, so it formalizes that. Okay, any further questions? Councilman, you said so? Yeah. Okay. All in favor of resolution 51502, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by nay. Resolution carries. Item 14 on the agenda, resolution 5-15-03. Approval of a bid award for the generator for the fire department. And this resolution needs to be filled in. Um, the recommendation from the fire department is not to go with the lowest bid, so we left it blank for council to decide which. So um, what the madam has said is that the resolution is needs to be completed, that the lowest bid is not um, the the lowest bid does not contain the generator of preference that the chief would like to use. And it's my understanding this is because um, their franchise or dealerships and the lowest bidder cannot sell that brand. They would prefer to have a specific brand, but it is not the um, <coughs> the local vendor preference. Three thousand dollar difference. Three thousand dollar difference. Do we have a generator there presently? Not working. Not working, but no. we're saying brand. What is it? Yes, um, the, we currently have a Generac mm -hmm. and it is not um, working. How long have we had that Generac? Here. Chief? Chief? Oh, sorry, Madam. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Generac may have been one that we received from someone, Chief. Was it no, we bought it uh, probably about 12, 12 years old. And the generator went out of service about a month or so ago and it was found to be not able to be fixed and so we went out and did solicited bids for a generator um the lowest bid is a generac with our local vendor kelly electrical but the chief does have a preference as far as brand and kelly's electrical cannot provide his preferred brand and so you would have to go with generator services um at twenty eight thousand dollars to get the blue star um, if you want to know specifics regarding his difference between the brands, certainly the chief can answer those questions. Chief, um, for the benefit of council, it may be best that you explain to them the difference in your preference. Number one, for the vendor we're choosing, wanting to choose, there have been service in our, all our generators for the fire department for the last 10, 12 years. 10 years ago, uh, we bought the generator from another dealer. Um, the reason is, and I'm not bashing any other product, that's what I'm not here, is the Blue Star 
it's got a bigger engine in it for a 60k generator. And I'll get very technical here, but I can get real tech. A Generac usually undersizes its engines for that 60k. They put a smaller engine and up the RPMs on it, it runs harder when it cranks and goes. Okay, that's pretty. So with all, all the, um, the additional features, cold weather kit, remote wireless monitor, the five year warranty, the semi-annual schedule maintenance and agreement, are we gonna be getting into that with the generator services? Yeah, it includes, I mean, we, we the comparison, the 25,000 to the 28,000 includes all upgrades that they are for comparing apples to apples, so all of that would be included. The warrants are on the couch. Both had the same warranty, and I can't recall. Can you buy an extended warranty? That's what. That's Most what it's a five-year extended. I'm sorry. Five it's extended a, it would include a five-year extended warranty. Both of them. We, we compared them, so they would be the same warranty, same everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Will be the same. Part, yes, ma'am. They'll be the same, then I'll, I'll be okay with that. How about your response to time for your maintenance, Chief? With your local vendor versus whoever were to start with the Blue Star? We get uh, buying your maintenance on our so probably about the same. Yeah, but I'm just saying, so the we're just say you went back to the fire station and it was down. You call your local one, and I'd like to think within 24 hours they'd be. Oh, oh yeah, same thing. Oh, 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 the guy that generated services is out of Camden, they got office in Columbia, and we got killed right here in Parkland. I mean, you're talking probably a 15 minute, 20 minute difference time. So you don't think you'd be waiting for days no. to get back? No. We don't now. When we have when we have a problem with it, usually within we call them that morning, we find a problem, they'll be there in a couple hours. Any further questions? It is interesting to note that their installation is double cost. Yeah, I, was, I was kind of confused by that because I was looking at the the, um, the numbers for the 60 kW and we currently have 25 kW generate. The 25 k we got now when we purchased only runs small portion of the fire department. Mm -hmm. So into a 60K, I'll run our whole department. Right. I just wonder why the Generac 60K wouldn't be sufficient. I'd be up to the pleasure of counsel there. Uh, I just feel like we'll get a long range maintenance out of the Blue Star compared to the Generac. That's just my value. Because that's how local vendor preference none. Correct. And speaking to the, the difference in labor cost, we with Kelly's they are our um, electrical contractor that's an on call contractor for the city and that's why their labor costs are so low, because we've already had negotiated rates with them for electrical services. So we couldn't um, did we ask for any special consideration? Being that they already have that business, that's what they gave us. Their their um their material and labor their labor is three thousand dollars versus six thousand for the other contractor. Okay. So Kelly's was they gave us their contracted rate. Okay, if there are no further questions, chair will entertain uh, call to vote item resolution five fifteen o three. Um, all in. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to pass uh, resolution mm -hmm. 51503. Is there a second? With the recommendation, which? Uh, with the blue star. With the blue star. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? I'm just reluctant to uh, double guess the, the chief here. If he, you know, he's experienced and certainly one of the best in the department. 
I just want to make sure we were getting the same accessory option to change this. Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by nay. Yeah, yeah. Item 15 on the agenda. Resolution to adopt Jerry Thompson as a... Oh, hey, you're still with us. Thank you for being away. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A motion to enter executive session pursuant to the South Carolina Code of Freedom of Information Act 30-4-70, paragraph 8. Subparagraph 1 and 2 for the receipt of legal advice and discuss legal updates on outstanding legal issues and pending lawsuits, discussions of negotiations, incident to proposed contractual negotiations, and discussion of city attorney contract. Is it such a niche? So moved. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All further? We stand in executive session. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.